You literally just like put like one line. This is what you were really going for, huh? Mm -hmm. So you took all the limes. Oh my gosh, you see? No, uh, like and it. more, oh my gosh. You know, I like it. Then why didn't you just show the people? You were trying to act all like Cause, conservative. Yeah, no. exactly. Because no. they're going to be like, what the fuck is he doing? I, yes, I have to bleep that out. Good. This is going to be, oh man, oh well. This is, this is a, what do you call That's it? Like the bloopers? <laughs> or what do you, oh, like it's not the, a blooper. The, no, but like, you, wanna, the, uh, you can, Body this dog. is director's cut. Use this oh. in director's cut. Yeah. In your <laughs> oh, gosh. oh man, this That's is great why people little... don't get the real. Mm -hmm. this is See, I'm trying spot. to offer a real experience, and that's what you're doing to me. Now, how is it? You you, you probably need more limes, huh? Look at him out of the room. All right, well, now how is it? It's great, it's still great. Well, you know what? People might be watching from other parts of the world. I doubt it, but who knows? And you just kind of gave them a fake experience on the first one. Can we believe you? No. I'm not gonna let them know my secrets. Oh man, all right, I'm out. Okay, it's menudo time. Hubby ass, and he's getting his wish. Right now, I have some beef foot cut into um, cross sections, and I'm giving it, I gave it a good solid rinse and soak, and now I'm going to blanch it to get any leftover, um, like residual blood and debris out. I'm going to rinse it in cool water. And actually in this pot, I'm going to put some beef tendon. This is just step one. I just put it on. It has not even come to the simmer yet. Okay, when you, I'm using beef tendons, like I said, and um, this is how they come sometimes. I'm going to be cutting off the residual like fat, which is this flappy part. And then it's going to look something like this. And then I'm going to use these to cut further. I'm going to cut them into smaller chunks. The leftover fat I'm going to cook up and tendon I'm going to cook up for my dogs. They're more mature dogs now. They're going to be nine years old and they're getting older. And I like to give them tendon sometimes and collagen so that um, it can relieve some of the stress on their joints. Okay, my beef tendon is cut into chunks and they're gonna go in with the beef feet. I also have tripe and honeycomb tripe and I'm not gonna, I'm going to blanch those as well, but they're not gonna be blanched with um, the feet and the tendon because I just don't wanna have to fish them out. Um, the tripe is gonna cook a lot quicker than the tendon and the beef feet because I'm gonna eventually debone the beef feet so my menudo will be boneless, but I want to put these two together because they're um, similar in their cut of meat and they're going to cook for the longest amount of time. So I'm gonna put them into the pot now. And in they went. Um, I'm gonna let them come up in the water is just some salt, um, slightly salty, not, not too, too salty, but enough salt to draw out any impurities and to just to give it a prelim sort of a seasoning, if you will, mostly to draw out a lot of that blood residue and things that's going on in here. Then once it comes to a full simmer, I'm going to let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna rinse it, wash out my pot, return every rinse out everything the bones and everything and then return everything to a room temperature or coolish liquid and then start cooking again i'll get back to you at that point and when i do return it i'm just going to put some onion and a little bit of garlic to start um, flavoring our menudo stock honeycomb tripe I don't particularly like the way it looks. It is kind of pretty, but it's always been kind of a texture that 
creeps me out. I mean, the look of it. I think there's actually a phobia associated with it, like the pattern of it. But anyways, how we're going to process it is, or how I'm going to process it is, is there's, okay, I'm going to take this bit off. This is just kind of where it connects. And I'm going to cut it into small pieces. In America, generally, tripe is incredibly clean like this is. The smell um, is kind of distinct. This is very mild. I'm going to trim off any excess fat. This doesn't have a ton on there, uh, but anything that is just a little too fatty, like these little bits. I mean, it doesn't need a lot of cleanup, but it just shouldn't have any like just random fat for no reason. It's not gonna add to the recipe. If it did, I would leave it. And I'm just gonna trim everything up and cut them into about three inch squares. Okay, this is my tripe. What um, I was the honeycomb tripe that's cleaned. And now I'm going to cut off um, anything. I mean, cut, cut them into squares. Like I said, um, you know, I like to make them a little bigger just because they cook down and they do shrink. Here's all the trim that I took off, all the fat, everything. I mean, other than this connecting gland little thing. I, all of this is edible. If you've ever bought like a can of menudo, you see there's a huge fat cap on there. And it's just because this is just a lot of um, extraneous fat. You, you could cook it if you wanted to. It just makes for a nicer, neater, less greasy uh, tripe experience. But it's certainly edible. And I will also cook that up for my dogs. Not this thing other than that. All this will be cooked with the tendon after I soak and rinse it and I'll make a separate little um, pot for the dogs. Okay, I just turned it off. It simmered for approximately, I don't know, 17 minutes. It's still simmering. I'm going to now just let it sit for just a minute just because it's kind of too hot for me to handle right now. I'm going to, like I said, strain it rinse all of the tendons and the bones, clean out the pot so that there's no like leftover residual of bone fragments or anything in my big old kettle pot. And then I'm gonna return it to heat. This is gonna be yummy. Okay, there is the cut and ready um, tripe. It looks really beautiful, nice and clean, nice and cut. Now. You know, depending on the size, uh, sometimes you get ends. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, exactly the, you cut it to the measurement you want. The only thing I would suggest is don't cut it too small because like I said, it shrinks. But at the end of the day, it should be able to comfortably fit at the end of a spoon because after all, it is a soup. And classically, you should be able to fit every kind of soup or stew comfortably at the in your spoon without it just falling out. My husband kind of likes to bite into the occasional nice big juicy piece of tripe. Um, what does tripe taste like? I would say it's probably an acquired taste that most Americans are probably not used to. It has a, but it is an acquired taste. And once you get a taste for it, it's really certainly delicious. I grew up eating it. I grew up in um, Los Angeles. So I had exposure to it from many different cultures, especially uh, my next door neighbors who were Mexican. So I've been eating um, tripe from a very young age, eating menudo and different kinds of dishes like that. But, um, you know, in all parts of um, many parts of uh, Asia and Africa, Central America, they have tripe. And it's something that you may just want to try in, you know, try throughout your life. And maybe eventually you'll come to love it. We love it. And that's why I'm making it. Okay, last but certainly not least, this is called like like a regular tripe. Um, this is, see, this is like not as honeycomb. I think this is called blanket tripe. And this is a perfect example of really what you're trying to take out when you are processing any of the stomach 
this is clearer to see because you can clearly see, let's say for example, this textured look, and then you see all that fat. That's all we're trying to take out. The rest is edible. Now you could also leave it and just skim it for fat at the end. It just makes for a better eating experience. Here's another example of the tripe. See, the tripe is on the outside and then these fatty bits, you can kind of clearly see on here, you could almost pull it off when I could. See, that's the fatty bits. It's just a little harder to see when it's on like a honeycomb tripe, generally doesn't have a lot, but it does have a lot, um, you know, once you start getting all this together. And that's why it's just nice to clean it up ahead of time. And then of course you can put it in your refrigerator or degrease it however you're gonna do. So you see, these are kind of a like a connected piece here. So this part is good. The inside we wanna clean up. And then that little hairy outside is what we're trying to keep. So we would be removing this section. I'm just taking the time to show you this because it took me a long time to understand how to clean it myself over the years and I could never get a good explanation of what exactly it was that I was cleaning. So you can kind of see the delineation line there. So look, it's like what we want and keep some of that fat. I mean, you can certainly keep it and it will all still have a good flavor, but so that's what we're trying to get out. Here are the pieces that I've already cleaned and cut. And then here are the pieces that are still fatty. So I've got about, um, let me see how many pounds I have of this. So I have about six pounds. I guess overall I have maybe 20 pounds of, of meat, including the, the tendons and the beef feet. All right, time to finish cleaning this so I can get to doing a little soaking. And I have to still drain my um, my tendon and my feet. So I wanna get this whole area clean before I bring in that hot pot. Look at all the fat that came off. This is literally pure fat. Now, if you, again, want to cook with it, there's tiny little pieces of tripe left, but I'm gonna call it good here. Um, that's it. Now I'm going to start soaking all of my stomach pieces, tripe pieces, and I just want to say that do not confuse uh, tripe with chitlins, which is the intestines of a cow. This is the stomach of a cow. Okay, change of plans. After I cooked the tripe, I was coming here to um, strain this beef foot and the tendons and the stock is beautiful, so, and I just looks wonderful and clear. I took out the meat and there's no residue. So no need to take out the flavor. Let's just continue from this point. Now, if you wanted to do it, by all means, go for it. Um, beef and pork, um, you know, cook up a little bit differently, but um, I did do a thorough rinse and soak on my bones. And when I came back to it, it just looks so rich and delicious already. I did not feel a need to rinse the bone. So we're gonna continue the process. Again, if you wanted to do it, you could. You have to do like I did, make sure you soak and clean the bones thoroughly before you put them in to get um, a really good, clean broth like this. So I'm gonna bring this back up to the heat and I'm going to continue to skim before I add um, my tripe. I wanna make sure that this is nice and tender before I add my tripe because it's gonna cook for a while. So now while this is coming up, I'm skimming as we speak. I've got my skimmer tool here and I don't wanna to spend too much time because my camera fogs, but I'm gonna to continue to skim and then I'm gonna add some onion and garlic and we're gonna start flavoring this. Just before I, I get to the next process, I just wanted to show you how lovely and translucent all the tendons and everything is. So the beef foot, okay. I think I've skimmed as much as it's going to. You see all of this is just fat. 
and that is to be expected and that was just from the beef um, and that's where your flavor is going to come from okay i've rinsed and deseeded i don't know about 10 12 guajillo chilies and now i am just going to soak them in some of my um broth because at this point we don't want to start um reducing the flavors by rinsing them too much washing them just give them a good rinse after you've seeded them rinse 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 scrub them and then let them rehydrate right in your broth because at this point we're trying to concentrate our flavors this is an important step sometimes you soak them and then you um, especially with guajillos you soak them and you rinse it drain out the cooking water i mean the soaking water and then all you're left with is um a like skin that's not even rehydrated guajillos are a real like they're they're the main chilies that i would say you have to do with this with they're one of the chilies that um you have to certainly strain sometimes i've got a good quality um blender i've got a vitamix but if you don't, you might even want to consider after this process, um, putting them through a fine mesh strainer. But for now, we're just gonna soak them. All right, I'm going to take the tips off of these garlics. This is one, two, three, four, five, like 10 garlic cloves. I already pushed one in, but I decided to videotape it. So I'm going to cut just the dark tips off and then I'm gonna squeeze them right into the, the feet tendon mixture. And that's all I'm gonna do for a good long time. I just finished doing the, you saw the guajillo soaking in um, the hot beef broth. And so then we're just going to let that go until it's tender. I'll let you see the next step after that. But use as many as you want. I mean, this was one and a half small cloves or heads of garlic. Okay, I forgot to say also one small onion that I've cleaned, I've trimmed the roots, washed, and now it's going into the pot as well. Onions are in and the last thing I did was add two cups of water, which I just poured in. Ooh, a sizzle. Okay, I took the, it's been about an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes roughly. I took like a little paring knife and the bones are still, or the beef, you know, like shank that was cut is um, like still tough. So I've removed uh, and I took the tendons out. I cut all of the meat off. This is where it becomes boneless. I mean, normally if you're going to eat something like this, it comes on the bone. But who wants all this bone? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put an additional four cups of water in and I'm going to boil the rest of the bones with all of the, you know, bit of like cartilage and everything that's still hanging on. All of it didn't come off easily. And then I'm going to get this going into a nice stock. I'll show you the stock before I put the bones in because it's turning into a nice, beautiful, um, opaque stock. And here's my nice, beautiful, opaque stock. So it's already, I could just see the collagen building in it. I'm going to put the bones back in here, like I said, with an additional two cups of water, possibly three cups of water, um, even possibly four cups of water. Why don't we just leave it at four cups and then I won't add any remainder water? You know, I guess, I hope. I don't know how much water is in here now. It looks to be, this looks to be at least four cups of water. So let's say, um, yeah, let's just add another four cups of water and see where we're at. And the reason for that is, is I just don't want to keep adding water. Once the bones are in, I'm going to fish out the bones Everything that's left on the bones, I will pare off with my knife if it hasn't just melted into the broth. And then I'm going to add the tripe, my blanched tripe. And I'm going to just blanch the 
tribe quickly i have it soaking in salt salted water for at least uh, the last hour hour ish since before i started this process and so the next step is just that look it's almost gelatinous as it is it's going to be super like that faux stickiness that wonderful quality that you get when you have all this uh collagen so once i um take out the bones on the next step just to prepare you for what's to come is i'm going to fish everything out and then i'm going to add the tripe and then we're going to start to um, reintroduce the the meat the collagen judy my angel all right my kitty needs lunch and then I'm gonna reintroduce the all of the all of the meat that came off of the shank, the tendon, everything. Get that going. Add the blatch tripe, and now we're getting into the point where we're gonna start blending the chilies and making our menudo to finish. Judy, is that Judith, do you want attention? Oh my heavens! What you have? You're so hungry. Oh my gosh, can I get the kisses? Oh, this is what I get. Oh, what a sweet, pretty girl. Okay, bones and water in. I'm gonna set my timer for 45 minutes. Okay, I lied. I'm adding an additional um, four more cups of water. So I added eight cups in total. And these quantities don't count. I mean, if you're planning on making a giant pot of menudo, you know, just cover the bones. And just because I'm gonna add the corn and everything, and I don't wanna just keep adding water and diluting, I'm just gonna get my water over with it from the beginning. This is just a guide of how you're gonna treat yours. So, you know, you do have to have, this is not a um, beginner's, guide to menudo this is a more advanced guide so you'll look at your ingredients and kind of understand things as it goes along i mean if it is your first time making it it's a good guide um, but certainly you're going to have to make it through and um, you know adjust as we go along so uh, just looking at my meat now and my um, corn that's going to go in here and all my other ingredients like i said now that i'm making my stock bones I want to go ahead and flavor all of my meat. I mean, all of my stock with my bones. So I just want to make sure I have enough liquid for that. Okay, all of my tripe is in a pot with cold water. I'm going to let it come to the boil, simmer for maybe 10 minutes, and then strain all of the tripe and then put it right in after I've um, probably just let it come to a boil or a simmer and then let it cook for about 10 minutes, let it sit in the water, and then um, just have it sitting there until I'm ready to take the bones out of my stock, which is now going, I'd show it to you, but it's just gonna clog up my, um, or fog up my camera. And then I'm going to reintroduce all of this, these beauties into my menudo pot. I'm starting to smell great. It's 1.14 in the afternoon. I think my active cooking time started at about um, 9, 9.15, 9.30. So there it is. While everything's cooking, I like to have all my veg soaking in um, water so I can clean my cilantro. This is an optional ingredient as a topping rinse all of that and get it nice and soaked. And then I'm going to also reintroduce some fresh garlic once I put all of my tendons and meat in there. When I add my tripe back, I'm going to add all of my collagen meat. Okay, I have about 15 minutes remaining on my, um, my stock. So I have my chilies, I put those fresh garlics and a few handfuls of some black, um, peppercorns. I'm just going to let them soak just to make the blending process a little bit easier. So I'm just going to let that sit. I'll adjust the water if needed with um, a little bit more broth. Okay, here's my, um, my tripe. I'm turning it off. 
and I'm gonna take the bones out of the stock. Okay, the bones are out. Uh, just feeling it with my the end of my spatula. They still feel a little tough. So what I'm going to do is now go ahead and add all of this um, collagen and meat back into the pot. I'm gonna cook this just a little bit, make sure it's tender. Just gauging how tough uh, my bones were. These feel a little bit hard, of course, they're gonna cling. And um, if I need to, I could just reserve this to make a really nice um, beef bone broth. All right, into the pot she goes. Okay, the beef tendon and everything is back in. I'm gonna set my timer for one hour before I put the tripe in, that is. Okay, I've added the tripe to, it's been an hour, I added the tripe to the pot and now I'm gonna add probably an additional four cups of water and then I'm going to blend the chili and add it in, you know, the guajillo. I'm gonna put it in my Vitamix really quickly. Okay, blend until nice and smooth. All right, I just uh, finished adding the chili to my menudo and I just used um, the jar to clean it out. There's a tiny little bit of residue to put in, um, to put the water in and swish it around and just get all of that chili going in. Now you see it's starting to resemble menudo. Okay, in addition to the chili, I'm also adding um, to the guajillo chili, I'm also adding about a tablespoon of dried um, ground California chilies, which is just another variety of dried pulverized pepper. Okay, I'm gonna try it off heat, uh, the broth, and then I'm going to adjust for salt. So at this point, you could just add a little tiny bit of salt to taste. It shouldn't be too salty yet because it's going to uh, reduce and concentrate and you don't want to end up with an overly salted soup. So before I close it, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. I'm going to rub it between my hands, put it in the pot. Normally this is done at the time of service where you would just add it to your bowl of menudo, but I like to add it now because it gives the menudo a signature taste and we like it if you don't want to use it um, in your soup. You don't have to, but it will not taste like traditional Mexican menudo without it. Another little upgrade you could add is another piece of um, fresh um, onion. I'm just going to tuck it in there and it will be fished out. I'll try to keep it whole. I'm gonna give everything a good stir, kind of tuck that onion in there gently. It still has the root on, so it should stay intact for the amount of time that I want it in there. I'm gonna let this cook for about uh, 45 minutes before I adjust anything else or add any additional seasonings other than what I've already added. All right, geez, no matter what I do, my <laughs> my camera fogs up. Lord have mercy, all right. God, my food is always so hot, like my husband says. All right, I just took this tripe out. I'm gonna give it a test. It's been 45 minutes. Let me taste it for tenderness. Just based on my fork, I'm gonna say no, but you never know. Hold on, let me just taste it. Mm -hmm. mm. It's yummy, but I like mine a little bit more tender. The um, honeycomb tripe always takes a little bit longer than the blanket tripe. Okay. The next step this is definitely gonna be cooking it longer. I'm gonna set my timer for another 45 minutes, but I'm also gonna add another good heaping teaspoon of Mexican oregano. And I'm gonna add a few stalks of cilantro. 
decided to try um, a couple of these hominy styles. I normally uh, make my own hominy, which is really just corn that has a process called nixtamal. Um, here's the Faron brand, Farron. Faron. Look, a faro, faron, anyway. Carnivore, then obviously um, avoid this step and you just continue to cook and tenderize the meat. If you like a more al dente tripe, it's perfectly fine at this point. But I like more of a melt in your mouth tripe. Uh, some people would call this a hard meat. All right, it tastes really good, I mean, I said it's it's perfectly yummy and delicious it does need more salt it needs more oregano and it needs that corn all right I just added the about I measured it one teaspoon of um, salt uh, about another teaspoon and a half of dried Mexican oregano and now I have opened up the two cans so the Faron Baron brand is a bit wider and the Juanita's brand, which I just noticed, uh, Juanita's I think produces a can of menudo. So I don't know, is this the menudo they use? I mean, the hominy corn that they use, both are hominy. So what it is, is just um, the corn that's cooked with nixtamal and then it blooms. So it becomes, um, like it's the term is like pozole means that the kernel has like split so this is actually a result if you were making tortillas you could not or tamales this would be a process that was over over the the desired not for pozole some people you know obviously make it but i tasted them both and um both are very flavorless um they just taste like exactly the same no difference whatsoever that I can detect. If anything, I would say this one is a little bit better only because it has salt, but that's not necessarily fair. I guess this one has a better texture and this one has better salt, but that's going to be easily corrected. When I put them both into my um, menudo, I don't think it's going to make a bit of difference. Okay, so those are drained, ready to go. I'm going to put the lid on my menudo. Let me take you over there so you could see it for the last time before I add the corn. Okay, there she is. Look at how uh, nice and needy it is. Whew. If you've ever bought menudo, you know how nice and needy it is. And when I add the corn, it's gonna absorb a lot of this liquid. Um, we really don't like it with too much broth. Oops, I don't want to break up that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to fish out that onion because now it's starting to break up and I don't want that. But the, my point is, is that I have just enough broth now to absorb um, the corn and for it to still have some broth um, without it just being all broth. So this is where I like it. If you like it a little bit more brothy, feel free to add um, more water. Um, another thing is I did add a pinch, about an eighth of a teaspoon of citric acid to just uh, increase a little bit of the acidity. I just wanted to mention that, but it's a, again an optional ingredient. Your citric acidity will come from the lime if you choose to add it at the end at the time of eating, which I am going to do as well. But I tasted it and it really perked it up just how I like it. Okay, it's been 45 minutes. Is anybody still with me? I just added both cans of the hominy, the corn. I have not tasted the, there's that, remember those cilantro stems I was talking about? Let me just fish them out now. Hold on, I don't have a little dish. All right, I didn't have a dish, but I had a little pot next to me. Whew. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna put all the corn in, give it a good mix. See, at this point, it's perfect. Look at all that, just ready to eat. No bones, seasoned. I'm gonna set my timer. It's 5.09, I think my last check was at one something. So 
And like I said, I started actively cooking. So this is an all day thing. Um, normally I would have started something like this the night before, but yesterday we just needed a break. And by we, I mean me, but my husband loves this and he's going to enjoy this for two, two good days to come. And my dad's coming in in the morning to visit and he absolutely loves menudo. So he's going to be super excited when I serve him a big hefty bowl of this. So now that it's all mixed in, I'm not going to do anything else until I taste the flavor of the corn incorporated. This is just about ready to eat. I mean, if you're not interested in integrating your flavors, which I would frown upon, you could eat it now because the corn is cooked, but um, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to continue cooking this. I've turned the heat up to full. I'm going to bring this up to a boil again, and I'm going to simmer for another 45 minutes. Okay, I taste. I was just about to put the lid on and then I tasted it and the corn really brought down the salt level. So I added more salt. I added um, a little sprinkle of onion powder, garlic powder, just to reinforce those flavors for the last time and a little bit more oregano. I don't wanna give you quantities, but I added about an eighth of a teaspoon of each. You adjust, all that is not necessary, you will taste it. Even if you didn't add any of that at the end, it's gonna taste delicious. You want your tripe to be nice and um, tender, not so tender that it tastes like nothing, like it's just too broken down. But in 45 minutes, it's gonna be perfect. Um, I just wanted to say that, so. To my grandkids in the future kids adjust your season at the last minute if you wanted to put a little bit more garlic and garlic powder not garlic salt or not onion salt but a little garlic powder which is just dehydrated garlic and onion at the end to sort of reinforce the flavors there it is Add as much oregano as you want because you are going to have oregano to finish, but this is a good way to get it started in your bra. So there it is. My grandkids are probably the only people watching this in the future. Love you guys. Boop. All right, time to put the lid on. Set my timer for 45 minutes. All right, I'm just doing a little sampler. Six. 6 p.m. on the dot. God, these limes. These are last season limes. This is the last of the last season limes because uh, it's winter. And limes and citrus are a winter crop. But I'm in the dining room now because it's football fun day Sunday. And I don't want to get a copyright restriction. I can't tell my hubby to turn down the volume. All right, I'm gonna get one of the fresh limes for him. All right, here we go. Oops, oops, all right, let me try it again. See, well, this is a tiny, this is like a demi toss spoon, like for espresso. This is a tiny bowl too. All right, here we go, let me try it. Let's see, I'll just, Move this on the pumpkin view. It lacks acidity. And salt. All right, let me try it. My husband's gonna, well, the way he measures how much um, lime juice he wants is by the the how the liquid turns white when he eats it okay hold on pumpkin view i'll do this butternut squash okay so what i'm really testing for is the doneness of the tripe and that's perfect six hours worth of doneness 
All right, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna put more salt. I'm gonna touch it up with a little bit more citric acid. And I'm going to, all right, citric acid, um, salt, and it's time to plate up. We'll see what my husband thinks of it. Aren't these beautiful? Got all these heritage pumpkins. I'm gonna be making some um, pumpkin beans, some beautiful pumpkin beans. Those are so delicious. I think I have a video up already on them, but I have to make them every year when I have these beautiful uh, butternut squashes and these Hubbard squashes. These are such beauties. All right, enough about that. Let's get back to the menudo. All right, here's my hubby's bowl. So what I have is, this is like literally the plate he always uses for menudo and kimchi stew. I don't know why. That's just his bowl. And then here I have the limes, cilantro, and white onion. I'm just going to go ahead and put some cilantro and a little onion. I think that's all he's going to need. Let's see, a little extra a touch more of this I'll let him lime himself and but I'll bring this little like garnish plate to the front and I'll also bring the oregano let's see how it goes okay here it is mm. I have to bring you your limes and stuff and mm. your oregano thank you how does it look fantastic all right let me bring everything else thank you Okay, you cheater. I know that what? while I was getting the tortillas what? and everything, you ate some. So what? now you're not going to fool everybody. It you was, did. It you wasn't cheated. me. It wasn't me. Oh, man. Okay, do you know how to do drywall? Because your nose is about to pierce the wall. How often did you have menudo growing up? Ooh, it was a regular staple. Like what, once a week, every mm, Sunday? I wouldn't say once a week, but definitely once every two weeks I would eat it. So somewhere, somehow. Oh. Like you didn't have a choice. Oh, we got need too much of that. Hecho in Mexico. Good old fashioned lemon press, lime press. You know, I like mine real limey. What what age did you have your first menudo? Oh, I, I couldn't answer that. I don't know. Like birth? Like no, I since don't know. your first memories? Mm -hmm. Well, I know when I was a kid, I just ate the corn, really. And as I got older, I started getting more and more into the meat. Oh. But I mean, like little, little baby kid. Like what, five, yeah. eight? Yeah, like that, like five. Like by eight, I was probably eating the meat then. You were eating tripe at eight? Probably. Okay. Then we get rid of the mix. Hold on, let me take a, don't eat yet. I want to take a photo. That only took a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is your method? Yeah, now you gotta roll it. Mm -hmm. And then this is your scooper. Then you let this sit in there and soak to take a bite of The tortilla? Mm-hmm. This took, um, what time is it? So it's, it's almost, mm. what, 6.30? What time is it? Oh, hell yeah. That was great. 
Perfect. Eight hours. Was it worth it? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Thank you. What What do you like about it? Everything tastes great. The flavor's there. It tastes like a great menudo. Really clean. You don't see all that stuff on top. I've had some dirty menudo before. God, look, this is what mm. he's doing off camera. Why didn't you do that, you uh, faker? Uh -uh. Oh I want God. people to know good, have a good menudo taste like that's Well, that's problem. what, no, that's they what the gotta whole point is. They got to figure it out. No, they don't have to figure it by out. The way, if you, by the way, see, don't want your house to smell like ass cheeks, don't make match. Brian. <laughs> cha, 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 cha. Cha, cha, cha. Huh?